Hello there guys and welcome to episode one of the how to make flight sim videos series. I'm not sure exactly how many episodes we're going to end up with, uh, but it looks like many of you guys are interested in this series. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the entire process that I follow in order to make flight sim videos. In this first episode, I'm going to show you all the tools, both hardware and software, that I use to create flight sim videos. And we're going to begin by taking a look at the hardware that I use. That includes the monitor, the mic, the joystick, and any other equipment that I use to um, record and produce the flight sim videos. In order to produce high quality content, it is imperative that you use high quality equipment. And I think it is important to let you guys know the kind of environment that I record in. Now the room where you're going to record your videos uh, needs to be very quiet and uh, preferably uh, away from the um, air conditioning vents uh, so that you don't end up with a lot of background noise. Now I know many of you have been complaining about echo uh, in my videos and specifically those who are probably using a headset or uh, watching the video on a smart device. And the reason why is that the room I record in has really no furniture. And I let me tell you guys, I've spent hundreds if not thousands of dollars on microphones, different microphones, to eliminate the echo, and I haven't been able to do so. So I use the Razer Siren today. It's a USB-based microphone. It is a good quality microphone. Um, and I use a, I've been using a different setting lately and applying a few filters in the video editing software in order to reduce the amount of echo. I know that I haven't been 100% successful in doing so, um, but unfortunately, uh, until I put in some uh, furniture in this room, uh, which is, by the way, a 4x4 four four meter by 3 meter ceiling, uh, I'm probably going to end up with some echo uh, in the background. So the Razer Siren is a microphone that I recommend for sure. In terms of the keyboard and the mouse, I'm using also the, uh, the Razer uh, line, product line. Uh, I have the, uh, the Chroma uh, keyboard and the Mamba uh, mouse. Uh, I like those uh, uh, simply because they have a lot of uh, buttons to use for shortcuts. And I do use uh, shortcuts quite a bit. Uh, they're very durable, high quality um, uh, pieces of uh, hardware. And I highly recommend that you also invest in a good keyboard and mouse. Now there's one thing that um, often is neglected, which is the monitor. Let me tell you guys, the monitor, aside from, of course, having a good PC with good specs, the monitor plays a crucial role in the overall quality of the image that you produce. The smoothness and the FPS is also affected by the kind of monitor and cable that you use. I'm going to display the, uh, the monitor model that I use. It is an Asus monitor. G-Sync enabled and overclocked to 165 hertz. Now I've done extensive testing with the cables. And what I found out is that the best cable to use is either DVI or DisplayPort. Do not use an HDMI cable. It, it is my experience based on the testing that I've done on two different machines, three different monitors and the three cables. And the result has always been minus 10 FPS when I'm using an HDMI cable. So the DVI cable, in my opinion, delivers the best image and colors, and the DisplayPort cable delivers the best performance. So I'm using a DisplayPort cable um, as of, uh, I think, as of April. Uh, first, I'm using the DisplayPort cable, and I've noticed a considerable difference and the final quality of the videos that I produce. So, um, by all means, uh, if you can uh, use a DisplayPort cable or a DVI uh, cable, but never an HDMI, 
And by the way, HDMI cables will limit the refresh rate to 60 Hertz. In terms of the uh, flight control hardware that I use, uh, I'm using the Redbird Alloy RD1 rudder pedals, and I'm using also the Thrustmaster Hotus Werthog for the joystick and throttle. Now let me tell you, I've used the SATIC um, equipment for the longest time until they finally gave up on me, so I gave up on them. And um, I'm very pleased with the Thrustmaster uh, joystick and uh, throttle. Uh, those pieces of equipment are quite heavy, and once you put them on your desk, they won't move. And that's a big plus because the last thing you want is your joystick or your throttle uh, moving. And when you get excited, uh, there is a chance that they will probably move. Moving away from hardware to software, as you can see, guys, I'm using the GeForce Experience NVIDIA Shadow Play Recorder to record all my videos. The three things I like about uh, Shadow Play is that one, uh, it is very easy to set up. Uh, two, it does not affect your FPS whatsoever while recording a video. And three, it's completely free of charge. Now, I am unable to show you my settings uh, simply because we are using Shadowplay to record this video. But suffice it to say that I have it set at uh, 1440p resolution and 60 FPS. Now, if you guys want to upload 60 FPS videos to YouTube, then you need to record the video at 60 FPS. Even if you don't achieve 60 FPS in the sim, if you want to upload it to YouTube at 60 FPS, that's what you need to do. Um, so if, if you actually take a look at the resolution uh, of my YouTube videos, you'll see the resolution and next to it, there is a 60 FPS or the number 60. Um, and that is what you need to do first when you're recording your video is to make sure that the setting here in shadow play is 60 FPS. Now, a quick thing on recording devices and uh, recording software. I've used Elgato, which is a hardware recording uh, device. And aside from the fact that it's very difficult to set up, I didn't actually get the results that I was expecting for such an expensive piece of hardware. Uh, maybe I've done something wrong along the process, but I just found that Shadowplay uh, produced a much better quality uh, video. I've used also things like uh, Fraps and Bandicam and uh, many other uh, OBS, I believe I've used for a while. And I really found that the best um, results uh, were uh, by using uh, the NVIDIA Shadowplay uh, video recorder. And Vegas Movie Studio 14 Platinum Edition is where I spend most of my time editing the videos that I create for you guys. Now, there is a lot of work that goes into editing the videos, and I don't normally like to add any filters, so I'd like to see, let you guys see the sim the way it is, but editing the transitions, uh, editing uh, the voice, uh, sometimes I, you know, I do QCs, I do a quality control check on the video after it's produced, and then I notice that, oh, well, maybe there is a, you know, maybe I've said something wrong or something that uh, was not in sync, uh, so, you know, you have to go and remove the voice track and re-record again. So all of these things really happen in, in this software, in the Vegas Movie Studio. And we're going to take a look at this in some detail in a later episode, but I just wanted to uh, show you guys the software that I use to edit the videos. One recommendation on the video editing software don't buy too many of those. Just go and invest in a good video editing software and try to learn it and master it. I've been using Movie Studio for a very long time now, over, uh, I think, over a year and a half. Uh, so I'm very proficient in using it. I'm not an expert by any stretch of the imagination, but I'm very proficient in using it. I know how to 
uh, harness most of its features and really get the value for the money that I paid for it. And by the way, if you're an owner of Movie Studio 13 Platinum Edition, uh, you will receive uh, a discount to upgrade to the latest version uh, by Magix. So Magix actually, I think, purchased, acquired, um, you know, the Sony product line, and now it's called Magix uh, Vegas Movie Studio. Uh, it comes with a lot of nice features. Uh, it comes with title Titler Pro Express version. Uh, this allows you to uh, put all those uh, nice lower third titles uh, on the videos, and you've, as you've noticed, I started using those uh, recently. And also the last, I think, three or four videos, uh, the logo, the the Q8 Pilot Channel logo that you see on the top of the screen also comes now from within Titler, Titler Pro. I do recommend Vegas uh, Movie Studio 14 Platinum Edition. Uh, in my opinion, it is uh, value for money, and it is not very difficult to learn, but it is definitely uh, very difficult to, to master everything that, that it offers. And last but not least, Adobe Photoshop, probably one of the most popular graphic editing software on the market today, and I use um, Adobe to create all my graphics. Uh, including the YouTube thumbnail that you see. And this is the latest one from my previous uh, uh, video. And uh, we're also gonna take a look at uh, this in some detail. We're gonna create a thumbnail together and uh, I'll show you uh, exactly how I produce mine uh, so that you're able to uh, produce your own thumbnails, hopefully by the end of this uh, series. Well, folks, uh, this is what I wanted to share with you in this first episode of the How to Make Flight Sim Videos series. I hope that this has been an informative and useful video. And until the next episode, please take care of yourselves and each other. If you have any questions, please do post it in the comment section below. And I will see you all very soon. Bye-bye for now.